Okay, so I thought that I could uh, briefly go over what uh, your michaelis Metzen curve will look like labeling the Vmax, the Km, and then also what each point on the curve actually means, okay? So we've already seen that uh, our michaelis Metzen curve, it's going to look, oops, it's going to look something like this, okay? And we said in a previous video that where this plateaus off, this is going to be our Vmax, and and then also if we go to our Vmax over two, this is going to be our Km value because that's the substrate concentration required for half of our maximal velocity, okay? But I want to explain what each point on this curve means and what's going on. So first things first is look at, anytime you have a graph that's shown to you, the first thing you're gonna do is look at your axes and see what your axes are telling you, okay? So our x-axis here is our substrate concentration. So as we're going across this way, we're increasing our substrate concentration. And then as we're going, and our y-axis is showing us our initial velocity, or you could think of it like how many reactions are happening per second or how much products we're making over a certain amount of time, okay? So you can think of it that as we're going over here, we're making more products or we're having more of an, a higher initial velocity, okay? So notice how as I'm increasing that initial velocity, as we're, so if I drew it out in a different color, as I'm increasing the concentration of my substrate, my initial velocity is also increasing because that means that I can catalyze more reactions per second and make more products, okay? And then as I increase my concentration of substrate, I'm gonna get even more and more. And then after a certain point in time, what's gonna happen is it's gonna plateau off and I'm gonna get to my Vmax, okay? And we already said that when you get to that Vmax, this is when all of your enzymes are saturated with substrate, okay? So you could kind of think of it like if, if you had five enzymes, or I just drew out like some kind of thing over here. So if we had like five enzymes, okay? And now I'm gonna add my substrate, right? So if I add one substrate, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get, that's gonna con get converted into products, right? So now let's say I added 10 substrates. Well, adding 10 substrates, yeah, it's gonna help increase my rate, but I only needed that first five to get to my products, even though enzymes can catalyze many reactions per second. So this is kind of not actually accurate, but after a certain point in time, when I get to so many substrates, it doesn't even matter that I add more substrates because the enzymes are already functioning at the fastest rate they can. You can't add more enzymes. Unless you add more enzymes, you're not gonna get a faster rate or more products, okay? Because the enzymes, there's, you're limited by the number of enzymes you have, okay? So when you get to that Vmax, all of your enzymes are gonna be saturated with the substrate and you're gonna get to that maximal velocity, okay? And again, the way you get your Km is you go to, you take that Vmax and you divide it by two and you, plot that on your curve and you go straight down to get to your Km. Now, it's kind of hard to see because a lot of times when you're looking at this curve, you've seen like other, other curves and this kind of looks like this is like over time. So you might think that this, this curve is kind of showing you different um, graphs of substrate over time. But remember, this is not telling you anything about this. Your wax is not time or this is not reactions over time or what I'm trying to say is that this is not, your axes are not telling you anything about time. It's substrate concentration versus your initial velocity. Now, your worksheet um, had an ATP concentration versus glucose concentration, so I'm just going to leave it in terms of this. Now, let's just simplify it and say that we only had one substrate, okay? Ignore that we have two, two substrates here. So I'm going to just simplify it over here and just say that we had one substrate, and I'm erasing the wrong one. Let's say I erase this one. So I'm going to erase this one, this one, this one, this one. And what I'm going to be doing in this experiment is notice how what I'm doing is, let's say that this is point A. This is con substrate concentration of one. Then in point B, we're increasing the substrate concentration to two. Then C, then D, and then all the way on. So each of these are different experiments that we're conducting, okay? And what we're doing in each experiment is we're increasing the concentration of ATP. So in the first experiment, I had one ATP and then I'm gonna measure the initial velocity. 
Let's say I get the initial velocity to equal one. Then in the next experiments, I'm gonna measure, put two ATP and I'm gonna measure the initial velocity, it's gonna be 1.5. Then the next one, it's going to be 1.75. And then the one after that, if I put four ATP, it's gonna be 1.8. And we're gonna keep increasing the concentration of ATP and we're gonna continue measuring the uh, initial velocity until we reach that maximal point. And again, when you get to that maximal rate, it means that no matter how much more ATP I add, I've reached my maximal velocity. And that means that I'm not gonna be able to increase my reaction anymore, no matter how much substrate I'm gonna be adding or increasing into my reaction mixture. Now, for the worksheet, we had two different substrates. We had glucose and ATP. So what you can think about as happening is that now instead of uh, worrying about now now because we're measuring two different things or we could measure two different things remember in any experiments if you wanted to directly measure the effects of one variable on a, the outcome you have to keep the other variable constant so in this case we can either keep the glucose or the ATP constant that's why we have two different types of experiment but we can keep either the ATP concentration or the glucose concentration constant, and then measure the initial velocity when we change the concentration of the other substrate. So either I can increase the concentration of ATP and keep the glucose constant, or I can increase the concentration of glucose and keep the ATP constant and measure the initial velocity there, okay? And again, remember, we're measuring the initial velocity because according to our Michaelis momentum assumptions, we have to measure at V naught or else the model doesn't fit our data. Okay, so it's the VNOF for separate reaction conditions. We're gonna keep one substrate constant and saturated, of course, because we, we don't want it to affect our experiment. So we're not gonna, we don't wanna be limited by the other substrate. And we're gonna then vary that other substrate and measure the VNOF to see how that substrate's concentration changing can to change our VNOF. Now, if you had five substrates for a certain reaction, then you would keep four of them constant and vary the other one. If you had 10, you'd vary nine and you, or you keep nine constant and you vary one. You always wanna keep everything constant except for one variable and measure the V naught that way. 